Nana Shastra Vichara Naitani Pano Sadharma Samstapa Kuo Loka Namita Kari No Tribhuvani Madhyasaranyakaro Radha Krishna Padaravinda Pashana Nantena Mataliko Vande Rupa Sanatana Raguyago Shri Jiva Gopala Guru I offer my respectful obeisances unto the six Goswamis, namely Shri Rupa Goswami, Shri Sanatan Goswami, Shri Raghunath Bhatt Goswami, Shri Raghunath Das Goswami, Shri Jiva Goswami, and Shri Gopal Bhatt Goswami, who are very expert, scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus they're honored all over the three worlds and they're worth taking shelter of because they're absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. So this is the Nectar of Devotion, the summary study of Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and it is presented by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna. Chapter 16. Varieties of love for Krishna. In the attitude of the denizens of Vrindavan, such as Nanda Maharaj or Madhya Soda, is to be found the ideal transcendental concept of being the father and mother of Krishna, the original personality of Godhead. Factually, no one can become the father or mother of Krishna. But a devotee's possession of such transcendental feelings is called love of Krishna in parental relationship. The Vrishnis, Krishna's relatives at Dwarka, also felt like that. So spontaneous love of Krishna in the parental relationship was found both amongst the denizens of Dwarka who belonged to the dynasty of Vrishni as well as among the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Spontaneous love of Krishna is exhibited by the Vrishnis and the denizens of Vrindavan is eternally existing in them. In the stage of devotional service where regulative principles are followed, there's no necessity of discussing love, for it must develop of itself at a more advanced stage. Persons desiring to follow in the footsteps of such eternal devotees of the Lord as the Vrishnis and the Vrindavan denizens are called Raganuga devotees, which means they're trying to attain to the perfection of those devotees. These Raganuga devotees do not follow regulative principles of devotional service very strictly, but by spontaneous nature they become attracted to some of the eternal devotees such as Nanda and Yasoda, and they try to follow in their footsteps spontaneously. There's a gradual development of the ambition to become like a particular devotee, and this activity is called Raganuga. We must always remember, however, that such eagerness to follow in the footsteps of the denizens of Raj, Vrindavan, is not possible unless one's freed from material contamination. In following the regulative principles of devotional service, there is a stage which is called anarta nivritti, which means the disappearance of all material contamination. 
Sometimes it is found that someone is imitating such devotional love, but factually is not freed from an artist's or unwanted habits. It has been seen that a so-called devotee proclaims himself a follower of Nanda Yasoda or the gopis, while at the same time his abominable attraction for mundane sex life is visible. Such a manifestation of divine love is mere imitation and has no value. When one is actually spontaneously attracted to the loving principles of the gopis, there will be found no trace of any mundane contamination in his character. Therefore, in the beginning, everyone should strictly follow regulative principles of devotional service according to the injunctions of the scriptures and the spiritual master. Only after the stage of liberation from material contamination can one actually aspire to follow in the footsteps of the devotees in Vrindavan. It is said by Rupa Goswami, when one is actually liberated from material contamination, he can always remember an eternal devotee in Vrindavan in order to love Krishna in the same capacity. In developing such an aptitude, one will always live in Vrindavan, even within his mind. The purport is that, if it is possible, one should go and physically be present at Brajabhumi Vrindavan and be engaged always in the service of the Lord, following the devotees of Brajadam, the spiritual realm of Braj. If it is not possible, however, to be physically present at Vrindavan, one can meditate anywhere upon living in that situation. Wherever he may be, one must always think about life in Brajadam and about following in the footsteps of a particular devotee in the service of the Lord. A devotee who is actually advanced in Krishna consciousness is constantly engaged in devotional service, should not manifest himself even though he has attained perfection. The idea is that he should always continue to act like a neophyte devotee as long as his material body is there. Activities in devotional service under regulative principles must be followed even by pure devotees. But when he realizes his actual position in relationship with the Lord, he can, along with the discharging of regulative service, think within himself of the Lord under the guidance of a particular associate of the Lord and develop his transcendental sentiments in following that associate. In this connection, we should be careful about the so-called Siddha Prana. The Siddha Prana process is followed by a class of men who are not very authorized and who have manufactured their own way of devotional service. They imagine that they've become associates of the Lord simply by thinking of themselves like that. This external behavior is not at all according to regulative principles so-called Siddha Prana process is followed by Prakrita Sahajiya, a pseudo-sect of so-called Vaishnavas. In the opinion of Rupa Goswami, such activities are simply disturbances to the standard way of devotional service. Sri Rupa Goswami says that learned acharyas recommend that we follow the regulative principles even after the development of spontaneous love for Krishna. According to regulative principles, there are nine departmental activities as described above, and one should specifically engage himself in the type of devotional service for which he has a natural aptitude. For example, one person may have a particular interest in hearing. Another may have a particular interest in chanting and another may have a particular interest in serving in the temple. So these, or any of the other six types of devotional service, remembering, serving, praying, engaging in a particular service, being in a friendly relationship, 
for offering every month, everything in one's possession should be executed in full earnestness. In this way, everyone should act according to his particular taste. Devotional service following in the footsteps of the gopis of Vrindavan or the queens at Dwarka is called devotional service in conjugal love. This devotional service in conjugal love can be divided in two categories. One is indirect conjugal love, and the other is direct. In both of these categories, one has to follow a particular gopi who is engaged in such service in Goloka Vrindavan. To be directly attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in conjugal love is technically called Kali. This Kali performance means to directly join with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There are other devotees who do not wish direct contact with the Supreme Person, but who relish the conjugal love affairs of the Lord with the gopis. Such devotees enjoy simply by hearing of the activities of the Lord with the gopis. This development of conjugal love can be possible only with those who are already engaged in following the regulative principles of devotional service, specifically in the worship of Radha and Krishna in the temple. Such devotees gradually develop a spontaneous love for the deity, and by hearing of the Lord's exchange of loving affairs with the gopis, they gradually become attracted to these pastimes. After the spontaneous attraction becomes highly developed, devotee is placed in either of the above mentioned categories. This development of conjugal love for Krishna is not manifested in women only. The material body has nothing to do with spiritual loving affairs. A woman may develop an attitude of becoming a friend of Krishna. And similarly, a man may develop the feature of becoming a gopi in Vrindavan. How a devotee, in the form of a man, can desire to become a gopi is stated in Padma Purana as follows. In days gone by, there were many sages in Dandakaranya. Dandakaranya is the name of the forest where Lord Ramachandra lived after being banished by his father for 14 years. At that time, there were many advanced sages who were captivated by the beauty of Lord Ramachandra and who desired to become women in order to embrace the Lord. Later on, these sages appeared in Goloka Vrindavan when Krishna invented himself there, and they were born as gopis or girlfriends of Krishna. In this way, they attained the perfection of spiritual life. The story of the sages of Dandakaranya can be explained as follows. When Lord Ramachandra was residing in Dandakaranya, the sages who were engaged in devotional service there became attracted by his beauty and immediately thought of the gopis at Vrindavan, who enjoyed conjugal loving affection with Krishna. In this instance, it is clear that the sages of Dandakaranya desired conjugal love in the manner of the gopis, although they were well aware of the Supreme Lord as both Krishna and Lord Ramachandra. They knew that Ramachandra was an ideal king and could not accept more than one wife. But Lord Krishna, being the full-fledged personality of Godhead, could fulfill the desires of all of them in Vrindavan. The sages also concluded that the form of Lord Krishna is more attractive than that of Lord Ramachandra, and so they prayed to become gopis in their future lives, to be associated with Krishna. Lord Ramachandra remained silent, and his silence shows that he accepted the prayers of the sages. Thus, they were blessed by Lord Ramachandra to have association with Lord Krishna in their future lives. As a result of this benediction, they all took birth as women in the wombs of gopis at Gokula, and as they had desired in their previous lives, they enjoyed the company of Lord Krishna, who was present at that time in Gokula Vrindavan. The perfection of their human form of life was thus achieved by their generating a transcendental sentiment to share conjugal love with Lord Krishna. 
conjugal love is divided into two classifications, namely conjugal love as husband and wife, and conjugal love as lover and beloved. One who develops conjugal love for Krishna as a wife is promoted to Dwarka, where the devotee becomes the queen of the Lord. Those who develop conjugal love for Krishna as a lover are promoted to the Loka Vrindavan to associate with the gopis and enjoy loving affairs with Krishna there. We should note carefully, however, that this conjugal love for Krishna, either as gopi or queen, is not limited only to women. Even men can develop such sentiments, as was evidenced by the sages of Dantakaranya. If someone simply desires conjugal love, but does not follow in the footsteps of the gopis, he's promoted to association with the Lord at Dwarka. In the Maha Kurma Purana it is stated, Great sages, who were the sons of fire gods, rigidly followed the regulative principles in their desire to have conjugal love for Krishna. As such, in their next lives, they were able to associate with the Lord, the origin of all creation, who was known as Vasudeva Krishna. Every one of them got him as their husband. Devotees who are attracted to Krishna as parents or as friends should follow in the footsteps of Nanda Maharaj or Subal, respectively. Nanda Maharaj is the foster father of Krishna, and out of all of the friends of Krishna, Subal is the most intimate in Brajabhumi. In the development of becoming either the father or friend of the Lord, there are two varieties. One method is that one may try to become the father of the Lord directly, and the other is that one may follow Nanda Maharaj and cherish the ideal of being Krishna's father. Out of these two, the attempt to directly become the father of Krishna is not recommended. Such a development can become polluted with Mayavad impersonal philosophy. The Mayavadis or monists think that they themselves are Krishna, and if one thinks that he has become Nanda Maharaj, then his parental love will become contaminated with Mayavad philosophy. The Mayavad philosophical way of thinking is offensive, and no offender can enter into the kingdom of God to associate with Krishna. In the Skanda Purana, there is a story of an old man residing in Hastinapur, capital of the kingdom of the Pandus, who desired Krishna as his beloved son. This old man was instructed by Narada to follow in the footsteps of Nanda Maharaj, and thus success was achieved by him. There's a statement in Narayana Vyuhastava prayers, the persons who are always engaged in thinking of the Lord as their husband, friend, father, or well-wisher are always worshipable by everyone. Spontaneous love for Krishna can only be developed by the special mercy of Krishna or his pure devotee. This process of devotional service is sometimes called pushti marg. Pushti means nourishing and marg means path. Such development of sentiment nourishes devotional service to the highest standard. Thus it is called the path of nourishment or pushti marg. The Vallabha Sampradaya, which belongs to the Vishnu Swami sect of Vaishnava religion, worships Krishna in his pushti marg. Generally, devotees in Gujarat worship Bala Krishna under this heading of pushti marg. 